Len Cabral is an internationally acclaimed storyteller who has been enchanting audiences with his storytelling performances at schools, libraries, museums, and festivals since 1976. I was minus two then, but we won't talk about that. A great grandson of a Cape Verdean whaler whose grandparents immigrated to America from the islands off the coast of West Africa, Len's strong Cape Verdean ancestry comes alive in his exuberant retelling of African, Cape Verdean, and Caribbean folk tales, as well as original stories and tales from around the world. I love you, Len. Len Cabral. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. So, uh, since we started out with sports, uh, I'm going to start off with a sports story. When I was, uh, I grew up in North Providence. I was eight years old. I tried out for Little League. I didn't make it. I was, following year, I was nine years old. I tried out for Little League. I, I didn't make it. Ten years old. I tried out for Little League. I didn't make it. I thought, gee, I played baseball with my friends. I, I, I thought we were all pretty evenly, but I didn't make it. 11, I said, I'll try it again. But I didn't make it. And then I was 12. And when you play Little League, you can only play until you're 12 years old. So you're not going to make Little League when you're 12 because you know they want to groom you if you're 10, 8. And, but I, I, want, I tried out for it. And the reason I tried out for it is because I wanted some adult to hit ground balls to me. I wanted to play catch with people. I just wanted to. So I tried out when I was 12 years old. I made it. I made it. It was 1960. I was the first black kid to make the North Promise Little League. It was the same year that the Boston Red Sox hired their first black ball player. Pumpsy Green. So I was Pumpsy Green, and I, I realized that I said, oh, oh, OK. And uh, you know, that, it, it, kept me, it got me thinking about where I was and how often I drove down the street, and I saw men working, but I didn't see men of color working. Construction. Uh, when I watched TV, I didn't see men of color in chorus line and all the t TV programs. I remember one night I stayed up, I was probably that age there, I stayed up with my older brother because <laughs> Sam and Dave were going to be on uh, Jack Parr show. So we stayed up real late to watch them. And end of the program, they didn't come on until the, until the credits started running and then they said, here's Sam and Dave. And so I grew up thinking about that, but I also grew up because I had adults around me that made me feel uh, like I was somebody. And I could look at my uncles and my dad and other men, and I knew they worked construction. They worked as longshoremen, and they were there. And so there was a lot of humor in the family. And I guess it's because of that I didn't take myself so seriously. And I guess if I was to talk to my younger self, I'd say not to take yourself so seriously and to laugh a lot. And also, make friends. How important it is to make friends, good friends. But in order to have friends, you have to be a friend. And uh, I'm talking about real friends, not acquaintances, but just real friends, you know. Real friends will say, hey, man, your breath stinks. <laughs> That's what real friends will tell you. Real friends will say, hey, you got a boogie in your nose, man. That's what real friends. But we all have acquaintances. So what I would say, I would, I would tell that, that friend, that, that young me, I would say that there were two boys going to school that lived in Kenya. 
and they're walking to school, they had their backpacks on. And they're walking to school talking stuff. You know, hey, we did that at school tonight. I'm going to play some basketball. Yeah, what are you going to do? I got some music I want to play. Yeah, yeah. They walk across the field. All of a sudden, they looked across the field, and there was a cheetah looking at breakfast. The boy said, oh, man, look, look, there's a cheetah. What are we going to do? Look, there's a cheetah. What are we going to do? That cheetah was looking at breakfast, I guess. No, what are we going to do? That friend dropped his backpack, took off his shoes, reached into his backpack, took out a brand new pair of Nikes. Started lacing up the Nikes. I said, whoa, how, whoa, what you putting your Nikes down for? You can't run faster than that cheetah. That boy said, I don't have to run faster than that cheetah. I just have to run faster than you. <laughs> whoa. I hope you don't have friends like that. I hope you don't, because it's important to have friends, because you see, you need friends, because a good friend is a safe port in a storm. And we're all going to go through storms. So we need to, that, that friendship. And we also need to think about how, how best to better yourself. And I think back often on those adults that that I, I listened to, my mom, who raised four of us, and the proverbs that they laid on us. And I thought about those proverbs like, money doesn't grow on trees. I thought about, and I still think about those proverbs, you judge by the company that you keep. And those proverbs like, the apple doesn't fall far from the and those who live in glass houses should not throw. Stone. And I think about those proverbs. And as I'm thinking about those proverbs, I, I say to myself, I, I'm, I'm reminded that something I would say to my younger self is, don't be so quick to judge somebody. Be patient. Don't be so quick to judge somebody because We don't know everything. And there are more things that we don't know than we do know. And we need to be patient in building those friendships and build those communities. We need to think back about our ancestors. And, and I'm so grateful when I think back, some of the influences that were laid on me when I was a young boy, and the importance of listening. And there's an African proverb that was laid on me. It says, we have two ears and one mouth, which means we should listen twice as much as we should speak. Because we're learning more when we're speaking. We do more listening, because if we do more talking, if you're talking, you're you're saying something that you already know. But when you're listening, you're learning something that that other person knows. So the powerful thing to, to be a good listener, and with that listening becomes an understanding. I listened a lot when I was young, and uh, I heard all these stories that were running around in my head. And I guess there's a reason for being a good listener, because now I'm a storyteller. And I, and I recall those stories that I heard from my parents and grandparents. And those stories come alive for me. And I try to share those stories when I work in schools across the country. And storytelling, a lot of people think that storytelling is for children. But no, no, no. We call them folk tales. We're all folks. So it's important that we share stories that we listen to each other's stories so we get a better understanding. My great-grandfather was a whaler. Think about that. Those whaling men who got in wooden ships, went out to the oceans of the world, and picked a fight with the largest mammals on the planet, a whale. And my great-grandfather did that so he could provide for his family. 
and bring them to America. So when I think about growing up, I look at the uncles, the grandparents, the aunts, the adults, the neighbors who helped raise me. And I, and I realize that I stand on the shoulders of my parents, and I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors. And I'm glad that I had the opportunity to come here this evening to share a little bit of what I would tell that young boy up there. Thank you.